All right then, gang. So now we have our farm validation all working for these different fields, but there's still something missing. I still want to add some kind of feedback to the user to let them know when their field is valid or not valid, right? Now, at the minute, what we're doing is adding a class of valid or invalid to the form fields when they're valid or not valid. So we could use those classes to style the form fields differently depending on the state. So let's head over to our styles.css right here. We have the base styles already in there, but I'm just going to enter out some space down here and we'll do some additional styles at the bottom. And these are all going to be validation styles. So let's just do a little comment there to say so. All right, then. So the first thing I want to do is grab an input field that is valid. So input dot valid. That means get any input with a class of valid attached to it, right? So when something becomes valid, what are we going to do to it? Well, I'm going to change the border color and the border color I want is a kind of green. And I'm just going to write out the code for this. It's three, six, CC, three, six. All right. So this one rule right here is already going to make a difference. Let me save that and refresh over here and we'll see as soon as this becomes valid. Now we get a green border that in itself is quite a big step. We're letting the user know that this is now valid. Let's check the email Sean at the net ninja dot k like so. Now we get a green border. Awesome. So that's that first step done. Now let's style it when it's invalid. So inputs and then dot invalid. And this is going to have a different border color. The border color this time, let's get rid of that space, is going to be an orangey ready color. I, in fact, just orange. We'll say border hyphen color is orange. All right, then. So save that. And now if we refresh, notice to begin with, we don't get that orange border because it doesn't have that invalid class to begin with. It's not been touched yet. But if we start to type something in that's not yet valid, it becomes orange until it is valid. Likewise, if I go over the top, it becomes invalid again. All right. So that's those two little styles done. However, I also want to conditionally style this. Now, ideally, I don't want this to show until a user starts to type into the field or if it's invalid, right? So when this form field is invalid, this here will show. Otherwise, it won't show because when it's valid, we don't need to see this, do we? All right. So then let's go about doing that. We'll say, first of all, input. If we can spell it plus P. Now this means grab an input and get the P tags next to it. And we can see that those are next to each other. Input P, input P, input P. All right. So it's grabbing the P tag next to each input. And we're going to style those first of all. The font family, probably don't need to do this because it's already inherited it. But anyway, Arial, uh, the font size is going to be 0.9 M's. Then the font hyphen weight is going to be bold. I'm going to text align this to the center like so. I'm also going to give this a small margin to the left and right, zero top and bottom, 10 pixels left and right. The color is going to be the same color as the border because we're only going to show this when it's invalid. So that orange color, orange, and then the opacity to begin with, because I don't want to show this by default is going to be zero. So that opacity zero means we're not going to show it by default. The height is going to be zero. All right, so if I save this and refresh, then we're not going to see those things. If I just comment out this little bit to begin with, opacity at zero, we'll see what it's going to look like when the form field is invalid. A little bit like that. Don't worry about the spacing yet. All right, then. So let's get rid of that. And then down here, what I'd like to do is finally style the P tags when the form field has a class of invalid. So to do that, I can say input dot invalid. And then underneath, or rather we need to attach the P. So when a form field, when that input field is invalid and it has that class, the P next to it is going to be styled in a specific way. And that is when we're going to get a full opacity. So we're taking out the opacity zero, overriding it with this thing right here. So it is visible when the form field is not valid. The height is going to be auto. So we're overriding this thing right here where we said height is zero. And then finally, the margin bottom 
is going to be about 20 pixels just to push it off from the next form field. All right, so if we refresh now, nothing showing at the minute, but I'll start to type the username. It's not valid, therefore we see the orange border and we see the orange text underneath until it becomes valid and then they disappear. So same again, Sean um, at the net ninja.co.uk becomes valid. Password uh, blah one two three four becomes valid. Telephone number uh, just some random number there and profile slug net hyphen ninja valid. All right. So there we go. That's how we can create this form and some validation using regular expressions. So my friends, I really, really hope that you've taken something from this course and you've learned how to make these regular expressions. And whereas before, something like this would have looked like a load of garbage and nonsense. Now you can probably look at that and say, aha, that is an email address. So there's more to regular expressions than what I've taught you. Far too many to create on YouTube. So I suggest what you do next is just have a little play around with these and maybe research some more on Google until you become an absolute ninja at regex. If you enjoyed these videos, my friends, please, please, please do not forget to share them, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And I'm going to see you in the very next series.